Hi, welcome to today's Tech Tip on testing two-wire coil unplug assemblies. We're going to demonstrate how to test these coil unplug assemblies off the vehicle so you can get a better detailed look on how to actually hook up to the coil unplug to test it. The first thing that we're going to take a look at in this two-wire coil unplug are the two wires that go to the coil unplug assembly itself. One wire is going to be power supply and the other wire is going to be controlled typically by the engine control module on the primary side of this ignition coil. What we're going to do is show you how to test and the results that you get when you test the primary side of this two-wire coil unplug ignition coil. Please do not forget the importance of making sure that you have a perfect power supply available to the coil unplug assembly. The other thing that we're going to show is this 20 to 1 attenuator and the importance when it comes to testing primary ignition on these two-wire coil unplug assemblies where the voltage can go up to 400 volts on the inductive kick the importance of using this attenuator to protect your equipment. So in order to make sure that the power supply is good before we test the primary side of the coil, we're going to connect one of our leads from the lab scope to the power supply wire. The other lead is going to go to the primary on channel 2 or channel B, depending on what type of lab scope you have. Now that we have our leads properly connected to the coil unplug assembly, the power supply and the primary side, we're going to connect the attenuator in between our lead and the interface for our lab scope. We're going to go to channel B and connect the attenuator. And then we're going to connect the lead to the attenuator itself. This is what's going to provide the protection to our equipment for the potential 400 volt inductive kick that could come back into the lab scope and ruin the lab scope. Whether it's a Ford coil on plug, two wire, or whether it's a Chrysler two wire coil on plug, the technique and the procedure are identical. Now that we have our leads properly connected to the coil on plug assembly, let's see what it looks like on the lab scope. We have power coming into the primary and the engine control module controlling the negative side of the coil. Once the engine control module turns the coil on, which is called our dwell time, it's going to energize that coil on plug assembly for a very short period of time, typically somewhere between one to two milliseconds. Once it releases that control, we induce that high voltage, which is going to be somewhere between 200 to 400 volts approximately, into the secondary winding. At the same time, we are looking at the amperage increase of the coil unplug assembly during the dwell time when it's turned on. The secondary control is what we call inductive coupling. We're going to take that 400 volts and step it up to thousands of volts. That occurs when we turn the coil unplug assembly off and we induce that 400 volts into the secondary winding and now we end up with the 7, 10,000, potentially up to 50,000 volts in that secondary. And we deliver that secondary voltage to the spark plug, which is what you see coming out of the terminal on the bottom of the slide here. Hopefully now you have a better understanding on how to test two-wire coil on plug assemblies. Two-wire coil on plug assemblies have been used for many years, predominantly on Ford and Chrysler vehicles. It is very important that you go into service information to match the results that you have on your lab scope for the specific vehicle that you're working on. Stay tuned on how to test three and four-wire coil on plug assemblies in the future.